Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be putting on some new tires on the Honda Trail 125. I've got these VRM 022s from VM V Rubber. Uh, they're a lot more aggressive than the stock tires and it should be a lot of fun. I'll be doing both the front and the rear today, show you how to get those wheels off of there and then actually how to spoon the tires off and then back on again along with uh, some of the actions you have to take on the tubes. Here are the tools we're going to use. Uh, these are Motion Pro tools. These were all suggested on the internet as being uh, pretty decent. Uh, here you've got a little uh, valve stem remover tool. I've got the Bead Pro. Uh, these are all aluminum. They're the lighter uh, transportable or uh, portable set. I've got these Rim Shield 2 to help us not put dings and dents on our rims. They are black painted, so they need to be protected. And I've got the Bead Buddy 2 here as well to just help uh, hold the bead off the rim as we're removing, or actually as we're uh, putting the new tire on the wheel. Here's that set of tools outside of their boxes. These are actually pretty nice feeling tools. Pretty high quality in my opinion. No rough edges, no sharp uh, burrs or anything like that. Well rounded. Even this little uh, bead buddy looks really well finished. Good job Motion Pro. The first thing to do is to get the motorcycle off of its size stand and onto its center stand. And secondarily to that, make sure you wear proper footwear. As you can see, I'm wearing socks with my sandals. No, seriously, have proper footwear. And you have to make sure that you go ahead and flip the side stand up first before you put that center stand down and take it off the center stand before you put the side stand down again. And the reason for this is if you have the side stand down like it is right now, when you're getting it on and off that center stand, you could have a tendency to have that side stand land on your foot which can be incredibly painful on a much larger bike. So get into the habit of always getting that side stand out. I will demonstrate the procedure. So with this Honda Trail, it actually has a really good grab position here. So I like grabbing this with my right hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and first of all, get it off of its side stand, flip that out of the way, and then I'm gonna drop the center stand, and I'm gonna rock it just ever so slightly so I can feel that both of the feet on that center stand are against the ground. And then while lifting here, I'm going to basically push straight down with my heel and it'll just push the bike right on up. Very simple with this bike. As you get into heavier and heavier bikes, it's going to be a little bit harder to do that. But basically, it's the push down motion that really puts that bike up onto its stand, not necessarily the lift up. I use this uh, position mainly just to make sure I have good stabilization. This is a little trick that I've learned over the years. And it's called the right hand rule. Um, a lot of people do righty tighty, lefty loosey. I have no idea what that means. Um, so I use what I call the right hand rule and you stick your fingers out in the direction you want to turn a nut or bolt, okay? So your fingers point in that direction. So in this case, I'm gonna turn this way and your thumb points in the direction that the bolt or the nut will go. So if you want to tighten a nut, right? And you want it to drive into the bike, well then you're gonna rotate it that way. If you want it to come out, you'll rotate it that way. Hope that makes sense. It's a little trick I learned, works really good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start with the front wheel first. This side has a 19 millimeter nut, and this other side has a 14 millimeter nut. Um, both the front and the rear have the same configuration. However, the bolt on the front goes from the right side of the vehicle to the left side, while as the back goes from the left side to the right side. Just keep that in mind. I'm using a breaker bar to initially get some bite on this nut because it's gonna be on there pretty good. Get a couple of good turns on it before I switch to a ratchet. There we go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and ratchet that nut all the way off. There we go, we have the nut off. And then you can usually use a rubber mallet to tap the bolt out that direction. I'm gonna go ahead and use my hand because it's in there pretty loose, but if you get it all jammed up with sand or something like that, you'll wanna use a rubber mallet. There's a couple spacers on the inside of the wheel, so just keep that in mind as you're taking this all the way out. Okay. 
there we go. You have to be really careful to make sure that you're pulling the disc out without damaging it. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this out here. And you can see these spacers here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull those out on both sides. On the left-hand side of the bike, you have the bolt, and this requires a 14 millimeter socket, or in my case, I'll use a wrench. And then on the right-hand side of the, the bike, the nut here requires a 19 millimeter socket. And take it all the rest of the way off. And here we're just going ahead and unscrewing that nut all the way while holding the bolt portion solidly with our other uh, wrench. And you're gonna take the nut off. Recognize there's an orientation. These are actually uh, lock nuts. So the locking mechanism is actually on the top of the nut and this goes in toward the bike. And then there's gonna be this plate right here, which you take off and a little washer. You saw that washer come off as well. So those are the three components on this side. Coming around to this side. It's gonna be those three things, except you're gonna have a bolt instead of a nut. So we're gonna pull this bolt out. There'll be a washer and then the side plate. And in order to get the bolt to come out, we're gonna push from this side while slightly lifting on the tire, and that'll cause that to start to come out on the other side. Like that. When I'm trying to get the rear wheel out, you have to drop the front somewhat in order to drop the rear wheel out. I like using a ramp here so I get a little bit of adjustability if you have these forks all the way on the ground, uh, you can have the center stand kick out from underneath it. So you did, definitely don't want to do that. So what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting about how much I want the front down in order to slip the rear wheel out. Okay, so now that we have the front of the bike down, you can see that the, the rear wheel has now cleared so it's very easy to go ahead and drop the chain. I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of cardboard down where the chain is gonna land as well, just so that we don't get it dirty. And just unloop the chain very carefully. The brake system is held by the bolt, so just be aware it's going to be a little floppy here. So as you're pulling this off, make sure you hold on to that brake, set your wheel aside, and then I like just shoving the bolt back through from this side here just to hold it in place so it doesn't fall. Also, just like the front wheel, the rear wheel has a couple spacers, so we're just going to go ahead and take both of those out. You can see that um, on the rear wheel, the size of these spacers are different. This is on the sprocket side, and the smaller guy is on your brake disc side. I'm gonna use a little five gallon bucket, just so I'm not putting any pressure on the sprocket or the brakes. To remove this tire, what I'm gonna do is remove the valve cover, and then I'm gonna use this Motion Pro valve stem removal tool to actually pull the valve stem out. Here we go. And just unscrew it. Then with a 12 millimeter wrench, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this nut here that secures the valve stem. So you're supposed to, well, <laughs> it came off the bead with just my fingers, but I'll show you the procedure anyway. Um, you sho shove this in here and then you use this part right here with a little lever and you'll stick that in here and then you go ahead and compress them together and that helps push it further down so you're not putting quite as much pressure again i think just with my fingers <laughs> i was able to break the beat that is not usual so don't think that that's going to happen to you every time and again because i've got this on this five bu gallon bucket works pretty well so yeah i got it all the way out the beat. <laughs> It's incredible thumbs.
So you can see once you get it started that it can actually come off. I'm sure I'll do this again on the other wheel with better results. <laughs> I think the key to these spoons, you have to be able to shove it uh, between the wheel and the bead. I've been trying to come in at an angle. If you come more uh, per or, uh, parallel to it, it actually helps uh, to get to where you need to go. So you just kind of go in that way. And once it's loosened, it comes off pretty easily. And you don't need the, uh, the rim protectors except at the very beginning. side is a practice. Let's go for the reverse side. Should be a big deal. Right there. I think the technique is sound though. Where it needs to be. There it goes. Easy from there. There goes the other one. Yeah, not even. rip this thing off at this point. So I'm going to push down on this side away from the valve stem and it should just rip off. Just kind of nice. And that is one painfully removed tire. First try. Took me, okay, not first try. Took me like 20 tries, but we got it. So what did we learn on taking your first tire off of a motorcycle? Number one, five gallon bucket, that works really, really well. I was very pleased with that. If you have a nice stool or something to sit down on, you can take your time, not worry about the world. Uh, second thing, uh, these rim protectors, I think for the smaller wheels, one rim protector for that first couple of bites, and then using your Motion Pro tool, don't try to come in at an angle, try to come in almost parallel to the direction you wanna go and it'll be able to catch underneath that, that tire rim. I don't know about you guys, but let's go ahead and start round two. Here's the front wheel. Again, just removing the valve cap, then the core removal tool. And then we're gonna go ahead and remove the little nut down here, 12 millimeters. Setting one rim protector this time. Actually, let's, uh, let's make sure that bead is broken. You can see it's already off. I'm just for the surprise they they do break that easily again if you do need to break the bead you'll shove one of these under here you'll put that second one in and then you'll lever it down you can see how much push you've got on that and you just work your way around with this tool until the entire bead is off of there i'm just going to go ahead and start with my first little bite here first bite takes a lot of force but once you get that over there Go. All right, and then I'm gonna give it a little bit more. Let's kind of stretch it out a little bit. So there we go. And then I'm gonna put this underneath. No, he's gonna pop that one. Maybe. Yeah. No, he's all right. There we go. Underneath the disc. in a better angle this time. There we go, right over the top. Pop that out. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. You just have to know the angles these things work at. There we go, nice dig. It's all right. Sorry about the noise, folks. So you can see how much faster that was. 
with one wheel of practice, I feel like I could uh, do this even faster the next time. So yeah, one rim, one rim protector is all you really need, if at all. all right, valve port me, rim protector away, same procedure. Let's get that first bite in. But this other second side is actually a lot easier than the first. And there we go. Piece of cake, right? Like a pro almost. Look at that. Alright, we're off. And I'm just gonna shove straight down. Certainly not pro. Okay. And there you go. I'm looking for any indication on these tires, the new ones, whether they have any directionality to it. And it doesn't look like it. Usually there'll be a little arrow telling you the direction of rotation. In this particular case, there is none. Um, and in fact, the pattern kind of supports that. So I'm going to go ahead and put the valve core back into this, give it a little bit of air just so that it holds its form, and then we'll go about uh, putting this tire on the wheel. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start threading this in, valve core. And then with the valve core tool, again, using my right hand roll, turn this way in order for it to sink back in. That's exactly what we're gonna do here. I'm actually gonna just use a hand pump here uh, just to make sure that I don't overfill it, I'm just going to add probably that's plenty right there. So before you put the tube in the wheel, you want to use cornstarch or some baby powder and just put a small amount inside of that tire. What that does is it reduces the rubbing or pulling of the tube because when you air down, there's going to be a lot of flex. And you definitely do not want that tube to wear itself raw. So the other thing I'm looking on this uh, tire is some sort of mark. Usually there's a yellow dot that tells you where the lightest point in the tire are, is. And that's where you should be putting your valve stem. On this particular tire, I don't really see a yellow dot, but I do see this B. That's the only marking I see that's not cast into the tire sidewall. So I'm going to just make the assumption that that is, in fact, where the valve goes. So I'm going to go ahead and shove this in here. The other thing that you're going to need is to have some uh, soap, usually a dishwashing soap with a little bit of water, or you can use a tire lube in order to get these things to slide on a little bit better. All right, so this is my, uh, this is my attempt at adding some soap to that inside. I'm planning on putting it on first. My wife will be very pleased that I'm using her hand soap. Nevertheless, it should work just fine. There we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and flip this over because that's actually the side I'm going to go first. I'm going to line it up with the valve stem hole here. And I'm going to go ahead and get that in there first. Again, I'm just getting this started on here so that it doesn't go deep into the, the tire once we get started. The objective is to get this bead, the far side bead, just over this rim. And she pops. 
So I think in this particular case, the rim protectors were not our friend. And, um, and frankly, maybe we didn't need the rim protectors at all. Okay, now I'm gonna lube up this front surface and we're gonna do the same thing. Again, Weiss donation of the hand soap dispenser. I'm gonna start near the valve stem and work my way up to here. And again, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't damage that rim, but these rims, they have a, what feels like a pretty robust coating, I could be wrong. I'm not terribly worried about it, honestly. Not as much as I thought I would be. Okay, now it's starting to get a little, little bit on the stiff side. There goes a spoon, anyway. Okay, maybe too big of a bite. So I'm gonna start making smaller bites. It makes me feel more comfortable, so I'm gonna stick it in a little further forward and rotate it back. Maybe even smaller than that. You know what I forgot to do, and this is probably why it's getting all tight up here, is so we were supposed to use the bead lock to try to make sure it stays off the bead. There we go. Okay. So that is supposed to hold it off the bead. We'll do it better on the other one. He's on there. Okay. Put a little bead buddy out. I'm going to go ahead and start inflating this. So I'll take it up to 41 psi, which is the maximum pressure for this tire. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and tighten the nut back down with my 12 millimeter wrench. Not too aggressively, just enough so snug. And then we'll put the valve cap back on. First step again, to insert this valve core back into the tube. my nut on there temporarily and I work my way around 
just like last time. But hopefully faster and better this time. Didn't mean to pop that out, but that's okay. Lift it up here. There we go. Okay. Let me get this other part in. Make sure he gets started here. A little bit of force before we get it going. I'm always checking to make sure the tube doesn't get caught. I'm not going too far either, so I don't get it caught underneath by going too far. The reason I'm pushing down here is just to make sure that bead didn't catch. I know the bead buddy's supposed to help with that. I'm taking super small bite. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot to lube the side. Get a little bit of lube right where we need it for this final biting. said to mean to let that pop out but we're really down to the last little bit so make sure those labels are towards you so you got the bead going the right way I'm gonna go ahead and slide it There you 
have it. Pump this up again to the 41 PSI maximum pressure. Tighten this nut. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the rear wheel back in here, being really careful. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grease my axle, and then I'll put everything back together. I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Get this little locating thing uh, in position. I don't wanna get it too far in. Just kinda of let it hang out over the sprocket. Again, I have the bike in neutral, so that should self-adjust. As you're putting in the rear wheel, once you get it past and chain back on it, go ahead and raise that front a little bit more so everything is safe. I've already got the brakes back on the little slider that it has up front here, a little peg. Get it all lined up so it's nice. I've got the tire centered pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise up the bike so I'm not under it in the event it wants to fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise the front of the bike just a little bit more because I don't need it quite so down. And then we'll continue the process here. And that'll actually help me so I don't have to lift this tire up nearly as much. So before you put the wheel in, make sure you put these spacers back in so everything's good there. All right, that one's in. Put the other side in as well. And once you get it in there, make sure you hold it up. And then, just a matter of getting the axle to go through in the right place. through the brakes, through the silver uh, adjuster. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and put the side plate back on, along with the washer. It's right on top of that. And then your lock nut in the correct orientation. To tighten this down with 44 foot pounds of torque. Please note, here are your brake pads. Make sure the, that your brake disc is centered in between those pads when everything is fully assembled. Before you torque it down, make sure you slap it forward so that these adjustment uh, pins are exactly set where they need to be so that you don't have to do an adjustment. I have my torque wrench set to 44 foot-pounds. I've got my knee holding the tire, pushing it forward slightly. And there you go, 44 foot-pounds of torque. First thing you want to do is put those wheel spacers back in on each side. Um, on the front, they're the same, whether they're left side or right side, different from the rear. You do have to pay attention to orientation there. Once again, I've put a little bit of grease on the axle and I'll line up the disc with the brake pads and then slide the axle from the right hand side of the bike to the left hand side. Okay. And then once again, we're going to go ahead and torque that down to 44 foot pounds of torque with the nut. There is no washer on this particular bolt and nut assembly. I have my torque wrench set at 44 foot pounds. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it all the way until it tells me I have the right torque. There it is, another couple little clicks, and there you have it. I had a lot of fun putting this video together for you. Had the help of my son filming. We had a lot of struggle getting the first tire off of the wheel. Second tire, no problem. Same thing with putting a tire on. First one was a lot of struggle, second one went really easily. So I think uh, it takes a little bit of practice. You know, if you're gonna plan on replacing a tube, getting a flat on the trail, and you wanna do it as your first time, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You know, do, do one of these at home, get comfortable with it, because again, the first one is gonna take you twice, three times as long as the second one. And you don't wanna be there and find that you don't have the right tools. Now, as far as tools, the valve core remover, absolutely critical. 
The two spoons, they were perfect. Obviously the soap and water work great and so does the cornstarch as far as the abrasion. I'm not convinced that either the bead buddy or the rim protectors for this particular small motorcycle are really worth their salt. Um, you know, use it as your own discretion, but I think you could probably get away without it. I did use the rim protector only in one particular case, and that was the first bite to remove the old tire. Aside from that, didn't really use it. It got in the way, it was really a pain in the butt. So use it at your discretion. Bead Buddy for these small tires, again, I did not feel like uh, I needed something to hold that down. Maybe that's for, for dirt bike tires that have, uh, you know, a bead lock. These don't have bead locks or anything like that. So overall, I'm pleased with the experience. Uh, you will have trouble getting everything lined up and getting that rear axle in. That was a bit of a struggle. And in addition to that, please be safe. When you're using the center stand, the center stand is really designed for the bike to be fully upright, both wheels in place, everything's good to go. Um, we ran into a bit of a problem in that the front was too low and it wanted to generally rock off of the center stand. So using a front ramp, I think was perfectly adequate for what we were trying to do. Basically the reason that I wanted to drop the front at all is so that I could easily drop the wheel out so that I could get the chain off of the sprocket and out through the back. I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, if you like this type of content, please subscribe. Hit the like button, hit the notification button. I have a lot more planned on this bike. I will be putting a new 164cc in here. Also, I'm going to do a full guide for basically every piece of plastic and trim from the front all the way back to the gas tank area. I'm going to be removing all that piece by piece so you can see exactly where all the fasteners are. I'm going to be putting in an electronic fuel controlling device called an EPI from Eagle Research. It should be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Thanks again. So these are the, the original tires here and the new tires. You can see how much more aggressive that tread is. Professional sure makes it look easy. Yeah.